Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the keyboard. And this is the one thing I really don't like about the hardware. The change in the hardware is the damn keyboard. This is my friend's old black MacBook. This is the keyboard on my new MacBook. And there's a difference. Now, more specifically, this is the thing that's really uh, the the pisser on, on the new keyboard and what I don't like about the change on layout. So if you look here at, at the old MacBook keyboard, let me zoom in a little bit. When we look at the actual old MacBook keyboard, you'll notice that the keys are slightly different. So over here on this side, you have brightness controls, you have volume controls, you have a number lock, you can switch out your screen, <clears throat> And over on this side, you have your function keys. And your function keys don't have any special controls on it. It's just function keys F8 through F12, eject button, and that's it. And that's good. This is what I'm dealing with now. On this version of the MacBook, um, let me see. On this version of the MacBook, you still have your screen brightness controls on F1 and F2, but they made a specific button for expose and a specific button for dashboard. <clears throat> and before, where function keys F8 through F12 were free, they provided us with iTunes media keys. And for me, this is kind of messing me up a little bit, and I got to find a way or figure out a way around this because these iTunes media keys are really kind of disrupting the way that I work with OS X. So previously, when I was using OS X, or when I was using Tiger, Tiger on my old MacBook, the way I, I had my expose uh, function assigned was as, as, as follows. So F12 was my dashboard. So F12 was my, F12 was my dashboard. <clears throat> F11 was to get rid of all windows. F10 was all, was all kinds of windows. So, you know, every window, all windows. And F9 was application specific windows like this. So, F9 does this, and F10 does this. This is on my old MacBook. And to me, this made sense. I, I liked it that way. Now, coming across over to the newer way of doing things. The way that the keyboard setup is assigned now is F3 exposes all windows like that. And going back to this, what I had to do or what I had to assign now is that F3 does all windows. F5, because that's the only blank key that I have to work with, F5 does my application windows and F6 uh, blows all my windows away. So there's a little bit of a difference and it's really messing me up and really screwing around with my workflow. Because, I mean, logically just thinking of the layout here, you have one expose button sitting at F3, you have the dashboard sitting, sitting between it, and you have the other expose buttons separated. So there's expose, dashboard, expose, expose, and it's getting to me. I can't stand it like this. It's really pissing me off. And I really have to look into system preferences. I really haven't even had that much time to look into doing a key reassignment. And I'm not going to do hot corners. I can't stand hot corners or screen corners or whatever the hell else you call that. So and I and I really like the old way of doing it where I can just use the function keys F9, F10, F11 and F12. That was simple. I loved it that way. This way of doing it is silly, ridiculous and dumb. So what I have to do is I have to work around OS 10, get into my system preferences and hopefully I'll be able to find a way to get around this and fix that. So that's just my thing on the keyboard right there. Um, in addition to that, um, so we went over the hard drive, the ports, 
They also changed some of the uh, some of the actual internals of it as well. Previously, if you've uh, I don't know if anyone else would show this to you, but this is how the hard drive tray looks now. On my old MacBook, the hard drive tray was solid all the way across, nothing, you know, just solid uh, flat metal going across. Here they actually perforated some holes in the metal of the tray. And my guess is that's to facilitate in cooling of the hard drive. So my guess is that should I ever down the road want to put a 7200 or maybe even a 10,000 RPM hard drive in my hard drive, in my, in my MacBook and just upgrade it like that, maybe I can get away with it. I kind of doubt it because the confines is the confines of the space inside is still really tight. So I don't think I would want to put anything faster than a 7200 RPM hard drive, mostly for heat dissipation purposes. So I'd say 7200 RPM is probably the most reasonable thermal limit that you can stick inside your MacBook without uh, dramatically shortening the life of your hard drive. But I do think I do find it interesting that Apple decided to perforate holes in the actual metal casing of the hard drive tray compared to the uh, my older MacBook which was just a solid flat metal sheet. So that's another change that they did. And uh, in addition to that uh, they changed the, the vents on the back of my MacBook. Uh, if you look at, at a first generation MacBook you see that these little nubs here, these little nubs don't exist on the first generation MacBook. So maybe there's some, they routed the cooling just a little bit differently, but this never showed up on my first generation MacBook. Shows up on my Panorama MacBook, it really doesn't matter to me. 